Guys, welcome back to another ESL podcast, man. I am your host, Arsenio, as usual. And today's a little bit different because I do not have to scream anymore because I have my wonderful microphone back. But nonetheless, guys, what we're going to be focusing on today is the TOEFL Independent Essay, how to make it, how to give it structure. So just recently, I was coaching uh, a student from Peru, from Lima. Big shout out to all my Peruvians out there. And she sent me her essay because I was a little bit worried about it. I was just primarily coaching her on the speaking questions, uh, which she ended up doing a pr- just a fantastic, a fantabulous job. But I was a little bit worried about her essay. So I gave her an essay topic and I said, I would like to hurry up and figure out if you have a problem with uh, or, you know, if there are any issues that we need to address in regards to the essay. So again, she sent me the essay and I'm like, ah, see, I'm glad that we addressed this because in the six coaching hours that I actually gave her, she ended up reversing it. And that's what I'm going to be showing you today. I'm going to be showing you her essay number one. Then I'm going to show you a mock-up of that same question and then how she gave me another essay with the structure that pertains to that mock-up. So what I'm going to be doing here, I'm going to be doing a little bit of a screen share so you guys are going to be seeing what I'm seeing. And so here it is, people. By the way, I know you guys are looking at me like, whoa, you are not wearing a simple t-shirt. You're a little bit dressed up. Yes, because I actually have to do a testimonial for one of my beautiful, lovely friends that I have. So right after this, testimonial time. Nonetheless, it's not about testimonials. It's about helping you guys with your structure in the independent essay. Question, do you, or I'm sorry, do you agree or disagree with the following statement? It is better for children to grow up in the countryside than in a large city. So what you have to do, people, you have to realize that it's asking you a question and that you need to take a stance. That's what your first paragraph is going to be. I'm going to show you on a mock-up. Now, what she ended up doing just a little bit wrong, she has a five paragraph uh, set up, and then she started off her conclusion with, um, with a conditional statement. And I'm like, oh my God, so what's going on? What's the thesis here? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna break this down. So her first, in her opening paragraph, the introduction, she said, I am convinced that growing up in a large city or in the countryside are experiences so different that, okay, so she uses two relative pronouns, that they help create particular types of personalities. Okay, now, personalities for who? Again, she didn't state her stance either. So when I read this, I'm like, experience is so different. Okay, like what? Okay, yes, you know, living in a countryside versus living in a large city. But where is your, I didn't understand where the thesis was. And so when I read that, I'm like, oh boy. Okay, all right, it's all good. We're going to go through this. So what she ended up saying after this was in her second paragraph. This is the first body paragraph. If you have a very... Tip number one, if you have a very weak topic sentence slash thesis, your body of work for your entire essay will completely fall apart because what you have to do is back it up with supporting detailed sentences. So it's kind of like stating a fact, a supporting detail, and an example from your life, right? And both of those two body paragraphs ultimately concluding with the last paragraph, which makes it number four out of the entire essay. Well, she did five. And because she had such a weak thesis, that's why she ended up doing five. So she says, quote, all the stimuli that a city offers, such as traffic, commerce, and the amount of people we contact on our everyday routine, tend to make an urbanite fast and judging and keen to stay up to date with all the advances. And I'm like, okay, this doesn't pertain to children. You didn't mention children whatsoever in this. What's going on here? So when she, again, you can see that she has the complex structures. She has everything, the vocabulary, the lexical phrases, but she was completely unaware of how to write an essay. That's completely fine. So again, 
What I ended up doing after this, don't worry, but let me just recite the rest of this. She says, on the other hand, growing up in the countryside helps you develop a closer connection with nature and become more humble by understanding the cycles of the animal kingdom. That does not relate to children whatsoever. Now, no, I'm not saying this in a very rude way, but this support, th there's no supporting detail that, and, and, and she's not focusing on the topic whatsoever. So this is what a lot of people do, especially out here in Thailand, me being a teacher, an instructor, a coach, a trainer, just about everything out here in Thailand. If you miss the point, you're going to get docked significantly, right? So be very, very careful. Again, her thesis was weak overall. So then she ended up talking about, okay, staying up to date with all the advancements and then closer, connect, closer connection with nature and become more humble by understanding the cycles of the animal kingdom. Now, the question, the original question was, is it uh, better for children to grow up in the countryside than in a large city? That paragraph is completely irrelevant. So if we go into the second paragraph, she says, in my case, okay, give me a personal example. I have always been a city person and I enjoy feeling anonymous and part of a mass of people. The intense people movement or the intensity of the movement, you know, by people uh, of a peak hour is where I feel comfortable. On the same day, I can attend a concert, participate in a protest and sit in a public park with a book while watching clerks go home, trying to guess more about their lives. Now that's a great personal example for you, but what about the children? I'm gonna keep coming back to the children, okay? I'm just gonna keep on coming back to the children until I get something about the children. So let's keep on going. She starts it off with still, comma, in her third paragraph. I'm sorry, in her fourth paragraph, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes, fourth paragraph. So again, Still, sometimes I feel that all my friends are too busy to meet me, and I wish I would know more about the trees in the park and birds that fly over my head. Again, completely irrelevant to the topic at hand. Um, I know the names of only a few of them. Okay, that was a, that's a sentence that you could ultimately omit because that doesn't even support, um, you know, the overall topic of the paragraph. And then she says, being, uh, and then she put, and, I mean, she put un, yeah, as in U-N, but she meant to put the article an. Urbanite in our contemporary word, not world, is a privilege, given the fact that it is where most decisions are taken, and it also means our, our existence is poor in terms of community and in terms of contact nature. Okay. There was nothing in regards to children. The ideas are all over the place. They do not support anything. You guys understand what I'm trying to say here. If you guys look at this and you have this same problem, be very careful. But it's all about the solution, right? It's not so much about the problem. It's like, okay, she has a wide range of vocabulary. She knows how to develop the argument. All I have to do is show her exactly what she needs to do. So I quickly showed her the structure within about 10 minutes. Um, I'm going to zoom past this, and here is another follow-up in regards to someone else who had written about the same topic, okay? This is a writing example, and I'm going to recite this out loud for, of course, my podcast is who are going to be listening to me. So it says, it is critically important that all children be raised in a supportive and healthy environment. Okay, you took a stance. In my opinion, fantastic. It is more advantageous to raise young people in a major city than to raise them in a rural area. I feel this way for two main reasons, comma, which I will explore in this following essay or in the following essay. That is the intro you want to take. That's exactly it. You have three sentences. Okay, it's important. Take a stance in your opinion. Restate the stance with the, you know, saying, okay, raise people in a, in a major city than to raise them in a rural area. And then your two main reasons will be the topics for your next two body paragraphs following the conclusion. Let's get into the first body. First of all, excellent. We're going in chronological order. Cities include a vast number of academic and cultural facilities of which help the intellectual development of children. So that's an excellent topic sentence. That's your opening. So with that opening, you need to support that opening. 
coming into the next one, it says, a child who visits such places on a regular basis will undoubtedly become extremely interested in some of them. Okay. Now, that's the support in detail that supports the overall, you know, the overall gist of the paragraph. Now, we're getting into the experience of the particular individual. My own experience is a compelling example of this. Okay, please do tell. When I was young, I lived in a major urban area. Okay. Compound sentence, comma. So, my parents could easily take me to a cultural event almost every weekend. We attended book readings at the local library, art openings at many of the galleries throughout the city, and literary festivals during the summer. Okay, she made a list, or he made a list, following that supportive detail. As a result of attending these outings, comma, should be a comma, I developed a strong interest in artistic expression, comma, and decided to major in music at university. Now I enjoy a successful career as a recording artist. There it is. So she gave the list. Okay, I did this, I did this, I did this. This fueled my passion. I ended up taking this route, and now I have a successful career as a recording artist. And to top this sentence off, she uses, or he uses, a conditional statement. Had I not visited so many stimulating places as a youngster, comma, I would not be thriving like I am today. That is a very sound paragraph. Now, let's get into the second body. Secondly, children who live in cities are exposed to people from many walks of life, comma, while those in the countryside communicate with only one type of person, all right, now let's see how you build up on this. Cities are usually magnets for new immigrants, okay, to my country and are populated by individuals from a variety of ethnic and cultural backgrounds. I think it is useful for children to have friends who come from different walks of life. Ah, very good, okay. Here we go. Exposed to many people from different walks of life, such as new immigrants from different ethnic and cultural backgrounds, and I think... Children who have friends from different walks of life, they end up being very, very exposed to a wide range of different values, ideas, cultures, and you name it. This is kind of like international schools out here in Bangkok. They could have anywhere between 40 to 60 different nationalities in one international school. This is what makes them, you know, just creators beyond belief because they're exposed to so many different ideas and they have a tendency of accepting everyone as an individual. It's such a beautiful thing. So here we go. Example time. For instance, my young cousin is growing up in New York. We're talking at time of writing, which is the largest city in my country, USA. By the time she was 10 years old, she had made, uh, past perfect, friends from five different continents. Excellent. Continents, not countries, continents. Although she is still just a student, complex structure, comma, she is comfortable interacting with people who speak a variety of languages and who have religious beliefs that are different from her own. Yes, use a linker that adds information such as moreover, comma. She recently mentioned that she was able to find employment at a company looking for workers with an international perspective. Accordingly, comma, I think that people who live in cities can enjoy a variety of beneficial interactions that supports the overall theme of the paragraph. Fantastic. And so, in conclusion, I strongly believe that it is better for children to grow up in cities than in rural areas. Okay, restate the thesis. This is because cities are home to a variety of educational venues, Okay, that's your par body paragraph number one. And because they have diverse and cosmopolitan populations. That is the sum up of paragraph number two, all joined together in one sentence with a linker such as and. There it is, people. That is sexy. Do you understand what I'm saying? So now, in saying that, I said, okay, what we're going to do, do you see this? Look at the breakdown. I want you to, I want you to just... Think of that structure when you write your next paragraph. That is all. She said, okay. So her second essay goes a little something like this. I agree with the statement. Now, I don't have the statement. I completely forgot, but let's see if we could pick it up in the thesis, which we should be able to, depending on if we actually have a very, very good um, 
you know, a very good opening paragraph. So I agree with the statement that the knowledge we gain from personal experiences is of more value than knowledge we gain from books. Without real experiences, here we go. We agree not, we would not know, oh, I'm sorry. We would not know how to solve real problems and implement, and implement innovative solutions. Experience is where we become real adults and grow as human beings. All right. She left out. She now you don't have to put and I'm going to I'm going to tell you through two main reasons. You really don't have to put that. It's a good way to put that, but that's more of a template, a template style. But this right here, that was a beautiful second sentence. I will retort that without real experiences. We would not know how to solve real problems and implement innovative solutions. That's sexy. And then she follows it up with the even better one. Experience is where we become real adults and grow as human beings. All right. You see how much different that is from our first paragraph in the other topic. This is completely different. Now, here we go. Chronological order. We have a four paragraph setup. That's what I told her to do. Do not force five. Do not force five. You got 30 minutes to write this bad boy. Okay. You do five paragraphs. You're going into writing. Uh, what is it? IELTS writing task two. Uh, what is it? IELTS writing task two domain or uh, area, whatever it may be. Let's go. Firstly, comma, when engaging in a concrete experience, we take more like we make decisions on many levels. She uses a colon. We have to gather information, focus on problem solving, use our soft skills. Now she would just say, say and use our soft skills. Again, excellent. Now let's see. A real project or challenge gives us the chance to grow on, diff, on different or in different dimensions. For example, creating a company requires much more than management theory as it implies nonverbal communication, knowledge, of culturally specific codes and so on. Okay. All right. That's very, very different from the, again, the previous essay that I had showed you guys. Let's go into the second paragraph. On the second hand, she didn't use a personal example though. Okay. For example, creating a company, she just used like uh, an example just out there in the universe, which won't be detrimental, but if she just uses her own personal example, it will help her tremendously. So coming into this third paragraph, on the second hand, comma, knowledge deposited, well, knowledge implemented in books or knowledge that is within books might be outdated or not relevant for the context. That is an excellent example. The everyday, got to combine the two if you guys are watching this on video, down-to-earth experience gives us the opportunity to test and check how much of the theory is adequate for our needs. Now, look at the first, the first paragraph, okay? I'm sorry, the first sentence. Books might be outdated or not relevant for the context. You have to support it with another supporting detail and then a personal example. She goes to say down-to-earth experience gives us what, what down-to-earth experience. Well, the thing is down-to-earth is more of an adjective in describing someone's personality. Like Arsenio is just down-to-earth. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? So this was a, irrelevant. It could be omitted. She needs to focus on that specific topic sentence. Might be outdated or not relevant for the context. For example, things that I learned about content marketing uh, just two years ago, uh, that won't be in books in university for the next 10 years. And by the time it does get implemented into university books, that information will be outdated because we're living in a rapidly changing environment. You see what I mean? That's how you back it up with a personal example. So nonetheless, she's got the structure. In conclusion, experience is the most complete university or univer universal experience is the most complete university of life. Yeah, okay. This does not mean she didn't restate the thesis. This does not mean that experience and theory do not complement each other. Now, she's meant to put a semicolon because she's just adding on to the idea. Real challenges help strengthen knowledge acquisition, which relies on information, our culture, process, and gathered, comma, in books and in other means. So I talked to her about those last couple of sentences. I said, we need to take all that out. Let's go back to that previous conclusion. Look how they used a, a subordinating clause, okay? Well, I'm sorry, a coordinating clause to combine both the topic sentence, 
of both the first body paragraph and the second body paragraph. We're going to put that together and there it is. So we went over this again so we could figure it out. You can see that there are little to no grammatical errors. Again, we make decisions, a couple of other things. But in this specific podcast, I want to talk about the structure. So in saying that, people, in just one essay, guys, it's all about following the structure, not a template, but a structure. If you have the ability to speak or write like her, you don't need a template. Use what you know, but follow a structure because that provides the cohesion and the coherence. In that first essay she wrote, she lacked both cohesion and coherence. And her ideas were all over the place. They didn't support it. There was no thesis. There were no topic sentences. May night, there was nothing. So I told her, okay, let's do it. She did an ex, just a, a much better job. Still a couple of other things that we needed to address, but now it all comes down to her receiving her score. So I'm very, very excited about this because I think we'll be like in the one teens about uh, for this TOEFL IBT uh, specific uh, test, the test that she just took at home, by the way, uh, the at home based tests because of the craze that's happening out there. So nonetheless, guys, I just today, I wanted to show you exactly how you come with the structure, not the template, the structure, how to employ structure into your write-up, not, and I will repeat that, and not a template. If you have the ability, like she does, and I know a lot of you do, you just need to follow a structure because with that structure, again, I'll repeat it, brings the cohesion and the coherence. That is how you get the flow. Remember to use those linkers, use different complex structures, okay, because they're going to grade you on that too. If you use simple sentences, simple sentences, simple sentences, you understand what I'm saying? It could be a big problem. And I'm going to show you that in another essay coming up real soon. I got another wonderful girl from Brazil who submitted me her essay, and I'm going to be very excited to go over this one because there were lots of simple sentences involved, and you know I do not like simple sentences. Okay, neither or neither does the, what is it, the reader, the, the thing that they use to correct the exam and stuff. So guys, in saying that, thank you so much for tuning in to this wonderful video. If you guys have any questions, if you guys want to get your free task uh, graded with some good feedback and guidelines, I would be more than happy to help you. If you're interested in the online coaching, if you're interested in anything, whatever it may be, thank you so much, or I'm sorry, just contact me. And for those of you listening to me on my ESL podcast, make sure you follow me on Instagram, the Arsenio Buck Show, and tag me in stories. Tell me what episodes you guys like. Tell me what else you would like me to go over, Q&As. I love doing this. I love interacting with my a wonderful audience out there. So in saying that, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any questions, you make sure you get in contact with me. I'm your crazy host as always. Stay tuned for more. Over and out.